QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Bill Form. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, sample rock castle construction practice file provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process, gonna maximize the home page. I'm gonna open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, open windows list, open the major two financial statement reports by going to the reports dropdown, company and financial P and L date range change. I'm gonna go from 010124 to 123124 tab tab so january through december 2024 gonna make the font a little bit larger customizing it fonts and numbers and let's change that font bringing it up to 12 okay yes please and okay let's go to the reports drop down once again company and financial this time the balance sheet the balance sheet gonna change the date to 123124 and run that one customize the report just bringing that font size up a bit fonts and numbers change the font size let's bring it on up to 12 2 12 2 we're going to say okay yes please and okay so there we have it we're going to go back on over to the home page we're focusing in on the vendor section noting the vendor section means that ultimately money is going to be going out for the purchase of goods and services for the use in our business. Now remember, the easiest way that you can do this would be that you're on a cash basis system and even more than a cash basis system, you're dependent on the bank. So that would mean that you have like electronic transfers, for example, that are you're gonna wait till they clear the bank, which shouldn't take too long because they're done with bank feeds and they usually have the vendor name in the memo and you can use that to basically enter the transactions into the system. When you do that, we'll basically be writing a check. So that would be the first easiest way. The next easiest way would be a cash-based system where you just pay the bills when they come due, possibly by check, and you actually write the check using this form, which we'll talk about later, decreasing the checking account, and then you reconcile that to the bank, uh, and we'll talk about that later. The next system, easiest way, the next easiest way would be an accrual-based system, meaning you get the bill, and you don't write the check directly or have an electronic transfer directly, but instead enter the bill into the system and then track the bill, paying the bills at some later point in time. That's the system we'll focus in on here. That's the accrual system. That's gonna be one where we're gonna be tracking the accounts payable and have to deal with that accrual account of accounts payable. So we're looking at then the enter bill form. The enter bill form can be found here. The enter bill form can be found up top in the vendor dropdown and then the enter bill. You can also find it in the vendor center, which you can go into here, or you could go to the vendor center with the dropdown vendor center here. You got the enter bill, which you can find in this dropdown. Uh, I'm sorry, this dropdown, enter the bill. You can also find the actual vendor and then enter a bill with this drop down and, and bills, right? So there's a whole bunch of different ways you can enter the bill. Most of the time, I will either go to the home page. Let's close out the vendor center home page and uh, enter the bill here, or I'll go up top and go to the vendors and enter the bill this way. Now entering the bill means you can imagine you got a physical bill or you got a bill uh, on from, from in some other way electronically or something like that. You're gonna enter it into the system, but you're not gonna pay it. You want to track that it's in the system. Entering it in the system before you pay it has some benefits because that means that you can put it in the system and record the expense uh, when you get the bill, which is usually closer to the point in time that you actually did the work. From an accrual standpoint, 
when you when you actually incurred the goods and services provided to you by the vendor that's usually where you want the expense to be because you actually used up the goods and services at that point in time that's usually closer to the point that you get the bill if you're going to wait to pay the bill till you know as late as possible so we're going to enter the expense at that point in time also it's nice to have that bill in in the system so that you can then use quickbooks to track the, the outstanding bills and then organize which bills need to be paid and when. So if we go into the enter bill, we're gonna open up a bill. It looks like a check form, but it's not a check form, it's a bill form. The difference being that the bill form is always gonna increase the accounts payable. So instead of like a check form, decreasing the checking account, you're gonna be increasing the bad thing, the accounts payable, a liability account. I'm gonna close up the icon up top and we're gonna go to the prior bill. I'm gonna go to the prior bill and find one that we can just take a look at here. So I'm not gonna look at this one because it's an item. We'll take a look at this one in a little bit. I'm gonna to go to back one more. And here's a good one because this is just a standard kind of gas bill. So let's just go through the normal data input when you enter a bill. So right, first we'd have to enter the vendor. If the vendor had already been one that we used before, then it'll be straightforward because the vendor will just start to type it in there and it will auto populate typically uh, there. So that would be great. If it's not a vendor that we've used before, possibly because we have a new company file, we can type in the vendor and add a new vendor as we enter the transaction, or we could just add a new vendor up top. That's usually how new vendors are entered. They're entered as you enter basically the transaction. If you're working on a company file that had been used by somebody else in the past, then you want to try to conform to their vendors. You don't want to change the name of the vendors. You don't want to have five different names for the same vendors. You might want to change things in the future, but you want to make sure that you're as consistency is important in the accounting software or else things get kind of messy. Then of course we have the date. I'm using tab to tab through the forms. Remember that the bill form is what QuickBooks calls a form. A form in QuickBooks means a data input form. The data input forms usually being the things to enter the transactions that will ultimately affect the end result product, that being the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss, and the, subs the, the reports that re are related to them, yeah, all other reports, right? So we've got the, the date, and then we've got the reference number we've got the amount so obviously how much we're going to be paying and then we've got the bill due date so note that the due date we could set automatically we might get the bill and say i'm going to enter the bill whenever i enter it and then i'm going to look on the bill and say when is it due by that due date is going to be important because then i want to sort the, this stuff by when the bill is due to determine when i'm going to be paying it you also might have the terms over here that can help you to kind of enter the, the due date, which, which will t give you like an automatic when the bill is due kind of uh, transaction. So we're gonna enter the transaction as of when we enter the bill. That's when it impacts the financial statements, increasing the expense, increasing the accounts payable. But it's not, and then the due date is when we're actually gonna be paying it by, that's when we wanna enter the check or the pay bill form. That due date could be done automatically with the terms, which would be like 15 days with basically this term. And we could have a situation where we get discounts, for example, if we pay early, that usually will be applicable if we're buying, say, inventory. So we might have a memo as well. So if we can add added information to the memo, that can be useful. Notice on the right hand side, we've got some detail in terms of the summary. So we've got the open balance still outstanding it's here and POs if that's applicable. I'm gonna close this with a little carrot. So we have a bit more detail down below. Then we have two tabs down below, expenses and items. I'm gonna make this one a little bit larger, putting my cursor on those three dots and dragging to the right. So we can see that a bit more detail. Let's make it even a little bit larger, okay. Now the expenses side is a little bit deceiving because usually when you write a check, the other side is gonna be an expense. So the, we can think of this as having a financial impact on the accounts on the financial statements, meaning two accounts are, will be affected at least. One is gonna be an increase to the accounts payable account. That's what the bill means. The other side usually goes to an expense. So an expense account down here, but not necessarily. We could have this bill form you know, paying, paying off a loan or something else that we're going to be entering. This could be any basically account that we're entering down here, which is often 
going to be an expense. We might be purchasing like an asset or something like that, a fixed asset, for example, in which case you'd have a property, plants and equipment type of account instead of an expense, an asset type of account. But in essence, you're entering an account down here directly. If you were to be purchasing inventory, that's the main reason that you would have an items tab on the right hand side. So an item would mean that you're purchasing inventory. The reason you need another tab is because the item's gonna help you to track the inventory within the QuickBooks system as opposed to just assigning it to an account. So in other words, if you're entering the bill and you just want to assign it to an account like an expense or an asset, you're usually on the expenses tab. If you want to track inventory within the system as you pay for something, as you buy the inventory, then you're usually got to set up items, which we'll talk about later, and then go to the items tab uh, to enter the, the inventory item. The impact on the financial statement of this bill is going to be an increase to the accounts payable and the other side is going to be going to uh, this expense account looks like it's the expense account. Now we don't use that's usually basically the most common or most important components of the bill just to give a quick recap of these items up top you can have a new uh, opens a blank transaction, you could save it, you can delete it if you if you need to go into a bill and delete something, you could do that. But again, be careful of deleting things because uh, that can have you know impacts because the bill can be tied to other forms and so on. Uh, you can uh, create a copy of it. So if you have like a long bill that has a whole bunch of expenses down here and you wanted to copy it and make another one or something like that, you can memorize. We might talk more about memorizing transactions in the future, which could make the duplicate of the transaction a little bit easier. But uh, also, if you have the same vendor that you're using, oftentimes it'll help to populate the vendor by just having the default settings populate the vendors. But again, if you have complex bills, uh, it could be useful to memorize. We can print, uh, we can attach files if we need to attach that. So we have a better kind of audit trail sometimes. Select the PO. The purchase order is a form we'll talk about in the future, only applicable if you're selling inventory and even then only if you're ordering the inventory, you know, before you're paying for it. And then you can connect the bill to the PO. We'll talk about that later. Enter time. So if you had time transactions that you're that you're entering the bill for, uh, we might talk about that. Entering time. We'll talk about that in a future presentation. Uh, clear the splits. So if you've got some transactions that are in both the expenses and items tabs down here, uh, that could be applicable. Uh, Reconcile. Uh, rec <laughs> recalculate so we could if something didn't calculate it should calculate basically automatically down here but if not you can kind of refresh things up top upload if you if you could set up basically a system of uploading the bills if depending on your particular cir circumstances which could make the data input a little bit easier in some cases pay bill opens the pay bill window so if you wanted to pay this directly you could go into this and it'll go to the pay bill window having that one already checked off i'm going to close this back out and say no. Uh, you can also, of course, go to pay bills by going to the drop down up top in the vendors and go to the pay bills. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. I'm going to go up here and go, oh, just let's take a look at the reports tab real quick. Uh, so many people don't use the reports tab quite as often, but you can kind of generate reports based on or that are related to this, this transaction. So you got the uh, quick report, opens a report that displays transactions for the selected vendor. So if I open that up, you've got the vendor report. Oftentimes you might get this detail from the vendor center uh, or by running a vendor related report. Report history, so you can see the history of the report. Journal, uh, transaction journal. Now this one, you probably don't use this to give to anybody, but this gives you the journal entry. So if you have an accounting background and you're saying, I wanna see the journal entry of the forms because the point of the forms is to enter something in part and not have to know the debits and credits. But if you're learning the debits and credits, then this is a great tool because every form that you enter, you wanna know which accounts are impacted, which ones are going up and down. And then if you know the debits and credits, the debits and credits can be more straightforward. So every form that you look at, you wanna be thinking in your mind, what's the impact on the financial statements? What are the debits and credits in other words, or which accounts are going up and down? So that form can be a useful tool just for practicing. The item list uh, gives you a quick jump to the item list, which we can again find in the reports as well. This will be more, more applicable with a bill if you had inventory that you're purchasing. 
Uh, the open purchase orders, again, only applicable in some cases if you have inventory, vendor balance detail. So this will give you a report about a vendor, which you probably would get more likely from the vendor center. Unpaid bills, again, you'd probably go to the vendor center to, to look at that in more detail. Purchases by vendor detail. So some reports here, I'm gonna go back to the main tab, which is the one that normally you'd be looking at. Let's take a look at the next bill. If I go to the next bill, here we've got this one, this one, similar process. The difference here is that now, instead of the expenses side of things, they entered that into the item side of things. Why? Because they're buying inventory and they're tracking the inventory within the QuickBooks system. So the inventory is being tracked. We have to set up the inventory items. We'll talk about that later. And so that'll help you to track the perpetual units of inventory in the system. Uh, and then you got the quantity, the cost and so on in order to populate down here. Let's close this back out. Now, next time we'll talk about entering the bill and then paying the bill. When you go to the pay bill, all the bills that you have entered that have not yet been paid will be populated here. You could determine which ones then you want to be paying and sort them at a future point. Closing this back out. You also, if I open up the tab over here, can look at a similar set of data by going to the vendor center. Let's do that by going here or vendor drop down vendor center. And so within the vendor center, I, I closed up the carrot again. You could go to the to the bills, for example, for a particular vendor, and then you could search the bills that have been entered here. You can also search for the open bills by going to the transactions tab up top and say, go to the bills and search for the bills here that have been entered. You can try to look for the ones that are open, the ones that have not yet been paid yet this way. And you can look for the overdue ones. There are none at this point in time for this company. Okay, let's look at the impact on the financial statements. If I open up uh, this carrot and we go down to the balance sheet, whenever we enter a bill, I'm gonna close the carrot for now. Whenever we enter a bill, it's gonna increase the accounts payable. So the balance sheet we'll talk about more later, but it's in order assets. I'm gonna close up this carrot altogether, liabilities, and then the equity down here. So we're focused in on right now, the liabilities side of things. We're focused in on the accounts payable. So when we buy something on account, entering a bill, we purchase something, we haven't paid for it. Then instead of the checking account going down, we have the liability account of accounts payable going up. We're sorting the fact that we have a bill that we have not yet paid for. So if I double click on the accounts payable, changing the, the intro date 010124. Now you can see this only has bills and payments of bills. That's what we would expect in an accounts payable account, right? It's gonna be going up with a bill and then it's gonna go back down when we pay the bills off. And if you get into this in more details, a bit more complicated one, you got this one right here, you can kind of like tick and tie out that 300. I thought I saw the other 300, but you should be able to go through and here's an outflow of 300. So you should be able to tick and tie them off, right? It goes up with a bill and then it goes down when basically uh, you pay off the bill. That's what we would expect to see in the accounts payable. But this accounts for payable report doesn't track the information by who we owe. So if we wanna track the information by who we owe, we can do that a few different ways. We can go to the vendor center we can go here to the vendor center and, and look at who we owe by going to the vendors here. Or we can go to the home page and we can basically track the outstanding bills by going to the pay bills. Or we can run another report, which is going to be related to the balance sheet report. Let's do that quickly here. If we go to the reports, here's this one. I'm going to close the transaction detail report. I'm going to close this one. So now I want to run another report that's breaking this information out by uh, who we owe. Reports drop down. We're going to go then to the vendors payables and we can go to the AP aging summary. This is the most common one. Oftentimes you could use the vendor balance uh, summary or the vendor balance detail. Let's take a quick look at that one. Vendor balance detail. And so this gives the information by vendor now so it gives the activity the reason you don't use this one as much is because this basically gives you the same stuff that you had in the vendor center but if you total it up you get down to the total of 26 6, uh, 36, 92, which should match 
what is on the balance sheet, right? 26, 636, 92. The one report that we often use more often because it's it's not the information you get from the vendor center is going to the vendors drop down. The AP aging report as of 12, 31, 2, 4. And this breaks out who we owe the money to, but it also gives us kind of that outstanding or the overdue stuff. So now we've got the ones that are that that we have that we have more urgency to pay uh, here, which can be a, a beneficial a, another beneficial added report that we might use for different various reasons within the uh, accounts payable cycle, especially if we get kind of more complex with a lot more uh, accounts payable. Let's go back to the balance sheet. So so there we have it. Now when we enter the bill usually the other side of the bill when we enter these transactions from 010124 when we enter a bill transaction for example and let's look at one that's down here towards december i'm going to scroll down so we've got these these bills that have been entered in december then the other side oftentimes if i see the split column this is going to give us now it's a little bit more complicated here because we have jobs so they're they're basically going to uh, a job account but that went to account 54300 note that every transaction has at least two accounts that are impacted so this one went to account uh, 64210 so the other side if i close this out 64210 let's go to the income statement close up this one six four let's just say six four two one zero six four six four two so i think this is six four two one zero if i double click on that one then you could see this was, was entered with a bill right so there's the other side of that bill i think it was the same one we were looking at if i double click on it and drill down on it that takes me back to the bill so that's how you can kind of deconstruct what is happening. So every time you enter a bill, what you want to do, and you might be able to go to the reports here and look at the transaction journal, look at the journal, look at the two accounts that are impacted, and then go to your major financial statement reports, balance sheet and income statement, and drill down, go from the source, go to the end result, and drill back down and see the building blocks that, that got to that end result. So when we go to the, when we enter a bill, it usually increases the accounts payable and then the other side is going to go to the income statement and it's going to be some kind of expense typically the expense is going to be you know decreasing the net income and we'll talk about these two reports in more detail uh, in future presentations but you might have accounts payable that is paying for say inventory so you might be buying the accounts payable and the other side is going to be increasing an asset an asset such as inventory or an asset such as as a, a fixed assets like furniture and, and fixture. So that's the general thing with the bill. I'm gonna go back to the home page here. And in the next presentation, we'll focus in on the pay bill component, uh, which would of course be the next natural step in the accrual process for the accounts payable.